I maintain that the only true salvation from any oppression or enslavement is self-empowerment, knowledge, consciousness. This is true rebellion. Don't get caught up in the 87% of people who follow the leader. People who think that they are rebels because they denounce authority simply because it's the latest fashion. Don't march the streets claiming that you are the enlightened one because you read a book or saw a film that gave you a glimpse into an uncommon knowledge. Don't scream phrases into a megaphone that you borrowed from another person's research. And don't proclaim yourself an original thinker because you belong to a group that represents an unpopular belief. Those are all examples of the other side of the coin of groupthink leading a false rebellion. False rebellion is dangerous because it gives the illusion that you are free and thinking for yourself. A true rebellion, a true revolution, begins when you quit following and start leading. And those who end up following you should be taught by you to quit following you and start leading. And the only way to lead successfully is by fully understanding your rights as a human being on this planet. We have very powerful tools on our side called the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. These documents state that no government can deprive us of our natural rights. So how is it happening? You must understand that the elite group controlling our government, our educational system, agriculture, and media are also in control of our free enterprise. Free enterprise is our economic system or our means of production, privately owned and operated for personal benefit. Free enterprise cannot legally be taxed unless it volunteers itself. The reason why income tax seems inescapable is because most every job on the planet requires you to sign a number of documents with fancy wording stating that you are agreeing to be a representative of a corporation or entity. What all this means is simply that when you sign working papers, which are required by pretty much every employer that you apply to, you are waiving your rights as a natural person protected under the Constitution and agreeing to represent an artificial person that is not protected under the Constitution. It's difficult to avoid because if you do not sign the document waiving your rights, you won't get the job. So why does every employer voluntarily pay taxes, which leads to the requirement of those documents? Because without doing so, the business loses all state and federal benefits provided to private or commercial business. And furthermore, most people simply accept the mistruth that income tax is required by law without investigating it. When your name is presented on a document with the first letter of your first and last name capitalized, it represents capitis diminutia minima, which occurs when a man's family relations alone were changed. It's a minimal loss of rights. When your last name appears in capital letters, it represents capitis diminutia media, which occurs when a man loses his rights of citizenship, but not his rights to liberty. This means you can be fined and penalized, but not enslaved or imprisoned. But when your entire name is capitalized on any document, it represents capitis diminutia maxima, which states that a man's condition changes from freedom to bondage. All rights of citizenship and family rights are surrendered. This means you can be fined, imprisoned, and enslaved in any amount for any duration at the whim of the state's suggestion. But it is important to note that if you do not legally bind yourself to these documents stating that you waive your rights and represent a corporation, you do not have to attend any court.